Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the new Irresistible Attraction Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which whenever someone plays a unit, they will steal a random unit from their opponent's side with the same amount of power. That means this event is all about matching up your power with the power of cards on your opponent's side of the board, which is exactly what this deck specializes in doing. So let's go give it a look. So today we'll be playing a Scoia'tael Precision Strike deck that plays low power units that are hard to steal because our opponent may not have any units with the same amount of power, and then uses damage on deploy to damage our opponent's unit's power to match up with the unit that we're playing to set up the steal. So that's the big idea for all of our bronze units here, and that is really the strength of this deck is all the bronze cards and teleportation to replay them. Things like the Friot Officer, Double Thon of Bowman is perhaps the best card in this deck because of how much flexibility it has, depending on where we play it, getting the precise amount of damage to get our opponent's card on 3 power to steal it. Similar with, yes, even Wolf Pack and the Double Thon of Bomber. Then we'll of course keep our Brocklon Sentinels in our deck for our leader ability. Then we also have the Sabertooth Tiger, which is an amazing first turn play because you put it down, use its order ability to convert into an artifact, meaning that your opponent can't steal it and then you damage whatever your opponent's first unit is and make it easier for you to steal it. And if you're stealing your opponent's unit every turn, then that means you will continue to get damage from the Saber to the Tiger every turn as well. Alternatively, if you want to avoid playing the first unit, which is generally the right thing to do in this event, you also have Incinerating Trap. Then for the big stuff, we have Great Oak, which gives us a big point slam, a big source of damage, and or a way of stealing our opponent's biggest units. Villain Trend Mirth, if there's something so big that we just can't even steal it. Or Heat Wave, or Geralt, as other ways to destroy it. And then lastly, Feign Death, because it gives us a lot more units on the board, helping us to flood our rows with more cards than our opponents could ever steal. So overall, that's the theme of the deck. It is really all about the bronze cards, and then if we can't handle something with a bronze card, using our big cards here to destroy those units. So overall, the deck is really simple, but it is really effective. So let's go see it in action. Alright, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. Alright, so we have a Sentinel in hand, and we never want that, so let's swap that out. And then we also do have the Sabertooth Tiger in hand, and that is great, because that is our best first turn play. Then as useful as Necromancy might be in the future, it's not super helpful in round one, so let's dump that. And Villain Trenton Mirth, along with Geralt, give us answers in case they play something really tall. In fact, that's what Heat Wave is here for as well. So we have a lot of big cards here, perhaps too many. We might prefer to have just bronzes in some of those spots, but we'll give this a shot here. So let's start off with that Sabertooth Tiger. And this is so great, because although it is, of course, a unit, if we use this order ability here transforms into an artifact which cannot be stolen which is usually one of the biggest downsides of going first we go with the Nilfgaardian Knight which means we'll weaken it down to a six which is a little bit of an awkward number again we ideally like to have more bronze units in our hand in some ways because that's where we get most of our precise power matching to set up steals but we can still do it if we go with Royal Decree here to get a Dolbathana Archer, because although this is a 5, if we play it in the range row, we can damage you by 1, uh, and we, I suppose, do have to hit the Saber 2 Tiger. However, we can transform that Saber 2 Tiger, and the damage is negated. And now it's Kingslayer, which is a little weird, because of course... That is a mill card. I think what the purpose there was is they're trying to encourage us to seal this so that it goes on our side, it gets spying, then they can use either Kudgra or Duchess's Informant to create another copy of it and continue to mill the rest of our deck. So let's not help them in doing that. Instead, we could destroy it with Dolbathana Bomber or with a Vryhead Officer. And we have two Vryhead Officers, so I suppose we go that route. And swap around the save to Tiger. And now, yep, exactly, it's Duchess's Informant, so I think they were trying to go that route. And now this is one of the reasons why our deck is usually really good against Nilfgaard, is because since we have all of this damage, 
on deploy from these cards, it's usually not as simple as them just creating a copy and being able to steal the card that we just played. However, unfortunately, we had several cards at five power, so they damaged one and stole the other. However, that's what we can do here. If we go Caravan Guard, we can damage one of these guys and steal the other. So, let's do that here. Don't think it matters too much. Okay, then they'll go with another Kingslayer. So, yes, it does look like they are a mill deck. And, in fact, that is arguably our best card that they just milled. Fortunately, however... Sabertooth Tiger will continue to hit them, and we could play the Dolbathana Bomber to destroy this Kingslayer. Alternatively, we could use our Stratagem to create a Scoytail Neophyte to steal it. However, as I was saying, I think that's actually not what we want to do here, because they are trying to create additional copies of this Kingslayer, and by having a Kingslayer on our side of the board, it makes it easier for them to do that. So yes, I think we do go Dolbathana Bomber here, even if it's a little bit overkill. And then that might be the last card that we play. So, yes, we would have ideally saved this for stealing more of our opponent's cards, but just didn't seem like that was actually the play on this occasion. Okay, so now it's Onero. Into a Lacerate. Okay. Oh, yes, and this was a little bug last time that does still appear to exist. When you play a special card, you will steal a one power unit from your opponent's side of the board if there are any. And we did have that Duchess's Informant, so they took that, as well as the Caravan Guard. And so that's what we saw happened here. Fortunately, it is not enough for them to pass us, so we could potentially still end the round now. We're not stealing any of these one power units unless we heat wave one of them, which is uh, not really what I'm thinking we want to do here. So it's a little bit dangerous passing in this round because usually, yes, your opponent is capable of pulling off a pretty big point swing and they do have one there. Okay, so we have a Dolbathana Archer. That is great for stealing cards and Necromancy to play one of the cards that we used in round one to help us steal some stuffs. Got Onero as well, very useful. We still have some big stuff here like Villain Trentonmirth, Geralt, Heatwave, Feign Death, which we'd like to save for round three. I imagine they'll probably dry pass here and just lean on having last say in round three, in which case we'll use round one of Oniromancy as our throwaway. Okay, and that is what they do here. So yes, let's go Onero and just play whatever our most disposable card is, and it's probably either a Wolf Pack or a Dwarven Skirmisher. Sure, we'll win this round by one point. We won't even play it in the melee row. Take that. So we'll win round two. Okay, so we drew into a Broccolon Sentinel. Never want that. Nobleton of Bowman is really good, though. The trickiest thing for us here is we're going first, which is generally going to mean it's easier for them to steal our cards. And they have last say, which is really big in this event, because as we saw in round one, if you get the last card, you're probably stealing one of your opponent's units, and that may very well be enough for you to take the round win. But I think we roll with what we have here. And we either begin with Feign Death, which will spawn in a Verna Seals Commando, which will get boosted by one, getting it up to four power at the end of our turn, which makes it very stealable. However, the scenario itself is not stealable. However, the scenario itself is not stealable. That's one option. Alternatively, we could go Onero into an Incinerating Trap, which is a way of avoiding playing the first unit, which is generally what you want to do, which is probably the safe play. Would love to save Onero for Great Oak, but that just doesn't look like it's going to work because we really do need a first turn play here. So let's go Incinerating Trap. Okay, they'll go Ardfi and Tortoise, which will take the hit. Unfortunately, we won't get anything boosted when we get rid of its armor. However, it now means that they have the first unit on the board, which is really nice because that means we can do something like play the Dolbathon and Bomber, damage it by two and steal it so we'll definitely do that here okay then it's tibor which is another mill card and they think that oh, at 13 it's gonna be hard for us to steal it which is true we could destroy it with Geralt of rivia but they do get out our brocklon sentinel which is very unfortunate because of course that would usually come out from our leader ability and that's one thing you do usually want to make a point of doing is use your leader ability 
aggressively in round one to thin out your Broccolon Sentinels so you don't accidentally draw into them in round two or round three, and in the off chance that you're playing against Mill, they don't happen to get it out with Tibor or some other similar card. So we could either go with Villain Trend Mirth here, which will eventually destroy Tibor, or we could just go for Geralt of Rivia to outright destroy it right now. Let's go Geralt for just the guaranteed destruction. And of course, no steal on this occasion. Okay, then Morlaham Hunter will steal Geralt. But before we play additional elves, which we will eventually do to steal more of these cards, let's make sure we get Fane Death down. And although now that we don't have 100% elves and that will prevent Burn of Seal's Commando from getting boosted, that might actually be a good thing because at 3 power, it is much harder for them to steal than it is at 4 power. And they'll go Duchess Informant probably for this Commando. No! The gold double thon of bomber, depending on who it hits. Okay, they may or may not steal something. They do manage to steal our bomber. So I think that means what we want to do here is actually go with precision strike. Heal out some damage. And I'm deliberately gonna get everyone onto two power, because if we get our Broccolon Sentinel out after finishing all these charges, we can trigger the death blow. Destroy one of those cards and steal another. And then use Necromancy. Get another bomber out here and destroy their other two cards and trigger the next round of Fane Death. So, of course, we would have gotten our other Sentinel out here had they not gotten it out using Tibor. And Rothens is, well, not wholly unexpected. He's usually one of their best cards for stealing. We do have some threes. So, the Vernus Heals Commando gives them a way of stealing them. However, if we wanted to. We could use Villain Trendmirth to steal Brothens, which they may or may not steal back, but even if they do, we might have a way of getting it back with Dolbathana Archer. So I think we give it a shot here. And at the moment, of course, Villain Trendmirth would destroy Brothens, which might not be a bad thing if they try to steal him back, but we'll see what happens. Because for the most part, we would like for all these units to remain really small where they are either easier for us to destroy or steal with our bronzes. Okay, it's a Thanid turncoat at four. It won't steal anything. So put the spying on villain Trenton Mirth, which is about to destroy Brothens at the end of this turn. But again, so be it. It gives them one fewer unit to try to steal back and get a bunch of points on their side. Again, we'd like for all units to be relatively small. And what we could do now is either play the Dolbathon of Bowman in the melee row to poke this Thanad turncoat and steal it, or steal potentially any one of these three cards, I suppose we can't guarantee which one it will be, or we could use the Vryad Officer to hit something and we'd steal one of the remaining three power units. So why don't we actually go this route first, since we have a little less flexibility if we go in this direction. And oh, except I totally forgot that uh, we were going to trigger Waylay. And so uh, I was not ready for it at the end of our turn. Our turn timer ran out, and it didn't randomly target the card that we would have liked to have actually destroyed to trigger the death blow on Waylay, so my bad. And they're trying to get Villain Trenmirth down low enough for them to steal it, which, okay, if they do steal it at 5, we can get it back with Dolbathon Archer. Or just destroy it with Alistair's Thunder. Okay, and again, it's technically a bug where they steal one power unit when they play a special card, but usually it's not a huge factor. So in that case, we're probably looking at a range row archer to take down both of these guys. I think we go that route. It is potentially a unit that they might steal, but if they do, then maybe that becomes our heat wave target, or we could potentially steal it back with the double thon of Bowman. So I think we do destroy both of those. Okay, then it's Onero, and it's Alzer, which does not have anyone to steal, and that is probably our Heat Wave target. Technically, we could steal him with the Dolbathon of Bowman if we played this in the range row, because that would give us just enough damage to drop him down to a 3. I'm not entirely sure that we want to do that, but I suppose it does give us more units on our side, so... Yeah, technically, it does maximize our points. And even if they want to try to steal them back, we have so many three power units at this stage that that is not guaranteed. 
Okay, so they'll use their leader ability here for a seven power unit, and now this will become our heat wave target unless they play something bigger. And it's Vanamar, and there is nothing locked here. So they won't destroy anything. They will seal one of our threes. But this is our last card. It's Heat Wave, and so we'll just get rid of their biggest unit, and that will be Wolverine. And again, technically a bug to steal a one power unit, but Uma's Curse will steal it back. And they'll see if they have a way to do something amazing here, because with a 24 point lead, it's going to be tough. Hero Professional will destroy something and will steal something, but I still don't think that's going to be enough for them. And so there you have it. Even without Last Say, we still managed to pull off the victory against the Meta Faction. Okay, going up against Scoia'tael here, and this is a friend of mine, so this will be a good one. They're going first. Okay, so we have a couple of incinerating traps, so that's a good first turn play, although since they're going first in this round, that's not as much of a need. So we probably will want to dump one of these, I'm thinking. And we'd like to load up a little bit more on bronze units to steal their cards, and teleportation can help us do that a little bit more. You could even make the case for getting rid of this incinerating trap as well. Maybe we hold on to it just in case. We'll lean on Royal Decree to give us another way of getting just the right unit to match their power if needed. So I guess we stick with this. Okay, they'll go Onero. Into, ah, uh, yup. Okay, Sabertooth Tiger. This deck may look rather familiar. It's already looking a whole lot like a mirror match, and Sabertooth Tiger, I think, is a very worthy Heat Wave target because it is so strong in this event. And then it's Feign Death, which, of course, would potentially be another potential Heat Wave target. But this Verna Seals Commando will get boosted as the only elf on their side of the board, which means that, well, we could steal it with a Dolbathon of Bomber if we'd like. So that's certainly an option here. I think we might go that route. Alternatively, Wolfpack does work as well. Maybe we actually go that route, to tell you the truth. Let's do that. It does mean that we control some non-elves, and therefore the commando will not get boosted at the end of our turn, but they, I think, also have plenty of low-power cards that would be able to steal a 3, may even be able to steal a 2 here as well. And it is exactly the card we might have expected. The Dolbathon of Bomber it lined up really well here where they could just destroy all of our cards. And it does also trigger Feign Death, giving them a few 3-power units. So I think what we do here is we go Caravan Guard, to hit an Elven Deadeye, steal the other Elven Deadeye, and now, on our next turn, we can either hit something with the Dwarven Skirmisher and potentially kill it, if we need to, and actually steal their one power unit, which is not often something that you have the option of doing, or, depending on what they play next, we can not trigger the Death Blow, get this up to a 3, and then there might be an option to steal with that. But they do certainly have waylay targets, assuming they have... Oh, well, I was expecting for it to be them triggering the last round of their scenario, but no, it's just a direct waylay from their hand. Which means, yes, perhaps it is actually worth triggering the death blow on the Dwarven Skirmisher to destroy this Deadeye and steal this one. But I think we go for it. You don't see that one every day. Okay, then it's a Dolbathon of Bowman, which is an amazing card in this event. It will destroy one of our units, steal another, and then trigger Waylay for them to destroy our last card. So I think what we do here is we go with our leader ability and lower all these guys down to two power. Then use the death blow on this Broccolon Sentinel to destroy one of these cards, triggering the death blow, getting the other ones out from our deck, stealing one of their other cards. And then we can use this Dolbathon and Bomber to destroy the remaining units. And now they're probably about to return the favor. That they are. Okay, then it's a Riot Officer as well. That leaves us with only one unit remaining here. 
Though we do still have some interesting options, because if we went with the Dolbathana Archer, in the range row we could poke this Sentinel and steal it, so it actually helped us that they used the stratagem on it, and then just hit something else with the remaining power. We could potentially teleportation on this Dolbathana Bomber, proc the damage, and hope that actually there will, guaranteed, be at least one two power unit remaining for us to steal. I'm not sure that's quite enough for us to catch them in one turn. It probably is not, and that might mess with our combo here with Dolbathana Archer, so I think we do still go with this. And then it's Becker's Rock Slide for just a huge burst of damage, which is just barely enough for them to retake the lead. So we do have a few options here. We could either go with teleportation to replay this Dolbathana Bomber, and at this point there is a chance that it happens to hit both of these Sentinels with the damage, which would be unfortunate because then we wouldn't steal one of them. We could go Royal Decree to get a card with exactly enough damage to steal something and maybe destroy something else. So that's the safest route, although we'd really like to save this. Geralt uh, obviously doesn't destroy anything, but could steal this Fried Officer. Or even an Incinerating Trap might spring it rather than ambush it to destroy one of their cards. I think we do try the teleportation though. It's a bit of a risk, but we're going to see if it works. And it does. And it's actually a small bug that whenever you play a special card will steal one of your opponent's one power units if they have any. Fortunately, it's not the difference maker here, but it does mean that they'll pass so we can win round one on even cards. And so we won round one on even cards, therefore we could either dry pass here in round two and guarantee that we have double last say in round three, which is tempting, especially because last say is a really big deal in this event, or we could deliberately push here because we have several cards that are good to play first, namely use Royal Decree to get the Sabertooth Tiger and or play the Incinerating Trap. Tempting as that may be, I think... I think we do still go with the dry pass here and we draw into some of our best cards. Not sure Villain Treadmirth actually can be a great pick because they are probably gonna have a lot of low units like us. So even Geralt, you can make the case for swapping out, but I think we do dry pass here. They'll go with their Geralt, so yeah, they probably have the same thought. Not gonna be a lot of tall units in this game, I don't think. Oh man, and we draw into some big stuff here. Oh, Nero. Riot Officer for more damage and easy stealing, and even better, another Dolbathana Bowman. And as we saw them do in round two, swapping out Geralt is not a terrible idea in case they just don't have any tall units, and since we know they have a very similar deck to ours, that's probably the case. So we probably do swap him out, otherwise his best chance is to maybe steal one of their three power units, but that's not great. So the Bomber is probably preferable, to be honest. So I think we do stick with this. And they'll go with a trap, which is a good idea for them, unless we also go with a trap on our first turn. So generally, it is best to avoid being the first person to play a unit. Oh, look at this. They deliberately discard a card, which might be the right play. And I imagine that this is also an incinerating trap, dealing five damage to whatever unit we play next. So we... Rather not play one of these bronze units that's going to get destroyed by that, and we'd rather save them for when we can actually steal a unit with them. But what we can do here is we go Royal Decree into Sabertooth Tiger, because even if we play this, and it is an incinerating trap, which it is, it can tank the damage, and then we can swap it into its artifact form, and this makes it even more potent of an early card to play because it'll deal two damage to whatever unit they play next in all likelihood as the only unit in that row and combine that with the incinerating trap and there are very few things that will survive that <laughs> unless they heat wave our saber tooth tiger as i believe we did to them in round one so you know what that's fair and now what we might do is basically recreate what their strategy was in round one by going near mancy into feign death or alternatively, we could go with Great Oak. We know they've already played Geralt, and they've already used their Heat Wave, so they may not have a way of destroying Great Oak. They might just be stuck trying to whittle away at it with little pokes of damage, and that might be worth trying here. And yeah, they'll play another trap. Wow. So I still think it's probably an incinerating trap, but in case it isn't, let's just make sure that we play something relatively small here. It does not either destroy our highest unit, the Great Oak, which 
would only be if we played a special card and we don't have any, so we're fine there. I think we'd probably go Dolbathana Bomber because it's our most disposable card. And yes, it is another Incinerating Trap. And for what it's worth, our turn was ending last turn, so it didn't have the chance of playing the Great Oak to the other side of this Incinerating Trap, where it actually would have gotten a small boost. And yeah, they'll go with the Dolbathana Bowman. That is probably what they're going to try to do to weaken this Great Oak to the point where they can eventually steal it, but it's not going to work this time, and that does trigger our Incinerating Trap. And so that does mean we're going to load up on additional units here without the chance of stealing any of their cards, which is a little unfortunate, but we do still have double last say. So hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. Let's go with the Variety Officer here, and we can actually take this opportunity to boost an allied unit. Since there are no units on our opponent's side, so we can get this back up to a 9, making it harder for them to steal. And they'll go Lacerate, which is 2 damage and does make the Great Oak slightly easier for them to steal again. But I think we might go with the same thing we did last time. Another Riot Officer here in the range row, except now Bonded will trigger. So we can get the boost and we can deal damage, except they don't have anything for us to damage. So I think we still go that route, though. And we will probably still boost this Great Oak to make this probably tall enough for it to be unstealable. Because even if we give this a 2 point boost... It is probably still within ceiling range for them. Okay, they'll go Dolbathana Bomber, which will not be able to steal anything. So I think we probably use our Dolbathana Archer this time to just outright remove the Bomber. And that would mean playing you in the melee row. But they might have a way to steal this. And so Nero... Into O... Oh. A bone Talisman. And again, special cards, although it technically is a bug, do steal one power units on your opponent's side of the board. And so they do get a couple cards in the process, but we do still have the lead here with two cards to spare. And so we will take the win. So there's a look at a Scoia'tael deck for the new Irresistible Attraction Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.